Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the first ever 72 pin connector hardware review. Today, we will be, discuss be discussing the 8 bit dough NES 30 Pro wireless gamepad. Uh, I got this guy on Amazon for about 40 bucks, um, and I'm going to tell you all about it. So, the first thing you'll notice is the packaging beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Like, Apple style packaging. So let's go ahead and unbox this guy. To help me out, I have got Mario and Luigi here. So let's open this guy up. And the first thing you'll notice is inside the box, they give you a keychain. Um, at least I got one. Um, nothing really more to say about that. I don't really care about keychains. But Here's the controller itself. Uh, the first thing to note is that the D-pad, very good. Not quite vintage NES controller style good, but still pretty good in its own right. I have really no complaints about it. Uh, buttons feel appropriately clicky. They haven't gotten smudgy or, or weird. Like, you know, some of the off-brand controllers, it'll have a real soft key press that just kind of sits there a little bit. Yeah, no, these are, these are very you know, pop-up, pop-down buttons. Uh, at the top, you've got both L1, R1, L2, and R2. Um, so you can use this as sort of a 360 controller replacement, uh, especially if you're trying to get away from that awful Xbox 360 D-pad. And if you're playing a lot of games, a lot of ROMs, you know how, that, how bad that thing can be. Um, so analog sticks. These are okay. They're functional. Um, I wouldn't, you know, play something like Dark Souls with this for hours at a time. They are, you know, a, a bit teeny. If you're playing something on the N64, they're not too bad because the N64's control stick what didn't, it wasn't really that precise. Um, but, you know, uh, if you're looking for something like Rocket League, something with a lot of precision and control, stick with the, the DualShock or one of the Xbox controllers because this just isn't going to cut it. Um, it does have the click down L3 and R3 capability, so it has all of the buttons. The only thing it's missing is like a home button here, uh, but that's that's not too terrible. Um, really, my biggest complaint is sometimes in games, especially trying to set up controls for emulators, you need to click down to set L3 or R3 for a certain function, and you'll try to press it and it'll slip because the control sticks are just, just teeny. Um, the controller is all plastic. It's very light. It's way lighter than I expected it to be. I kind of wanted a heavier controller, uh, especially when I show you the other piece of equipment I got with the controller for... I'll explain that here in a bit. Uh, but it, it works okay. It will not tire you out. Uh, and the battery life is amazing. Speaking of the battery life, micro USB. Just plug this bad boy into one of the hundreds of micro USB cables you have laying around. And this charge will go forever. I haven't gotten it to, you know, go to low battery state yet. And I went through Super Metroid with it. Um, so, you know, that's a controller. But there is more in the box. So underneath this foam, we've got this little lift-up pad here. Instructions, which aren't completely ingrished. Uh, they're actually pretty nice instructions, all things considered. Um, tells you about... Some of the more advanced functions, and I'll, I'll delve into that here in a bit, uh, but the website is basically a carbon copy of what you're going to get here, so you don't need to keep this, but it's helpful for reference if you want it. Uh, otherwise, in the box, um, right here we've got yet another keychain. Um, it's a keychain. But uh, what really makes me happy is they did include a USB cable. Uh, one nice thing about this controller is, yes, it is Bluetooth. This is not dongle-based. It is completely Bluetooth. Um, but you don't have to use it as just a strict Bluetooth controller. You can use the included micro USB cable, which is standard in every way, just one of the thin builds, um, or any other micro USB cable. And after you power on the controller, plug it in, and it becomes a USB controller. You don't have to use it wirelessly if you don't want to. Uh, I find that really nice because I one of my computers doesn't have Bluetooth, and I hate having to move the Bluetooth module around back and forth. Uh, so that's that. That's all that's in the box. 
Um, a couple of the cool things this can do. So Bluetooth, it can do, it can be a wired USB controller. Um, if you load the advanced firmware, you can actually hook this up to a PS3. You can hook it up to a Wii. Uh, you can make it do a whole lot of stuff. If you have a rooted Android phone, you can map these buttons to areas on the screen. Uh, it's pretty wild. But the thing I really wanted to show you is for 10 bucks, 8-bit dough also sells plastic. Now, what these do is these two things hook together, kind of like this, and they're solid. They're stuck there, right? That's not going anywhere. Uh, this section, of course, holds your controller. So we'll go ahead and load this guy in here. Trying to keep this in shot as much as possible. There we go. So nice and snug. That thing's not going anywhere. And then this is nice internal spring loaded. It's got these two, they're kind of hard to see on camera, these two little rubber stopper pads on each side. Um, and what this does is it allows you to sit your phone just like this. Now for size reference, this is a Nexus 6P. This is a giant phone. One of the reasons I really wish this controller was heavier is because with a big phone like this, with a case on it, this feels a little top heavy. It's not exactly, you know, the weight distribution that I would want if, you know, I was gaming on, you know, a train or subway or, or something that's going to bounce around a lot. But what's really cool, I'm going to power this guy on here. I have already paired this with my phone. So it boots up. You've got this nice LED ring here, which does light up with different colors depending on what's happening with the controller. Nice little status lights. And then... We'll launch 72 Pin Connector's favorite emulator, RetroArch, and I'm playing Super Metroid. Look at that. So if you wanted to, you know, load up RetroArch and some ROMs on your phone, get some to-go gaming, and be able to bring this controller home to use with RetroPie or anything else, you absolutely can. So if you're looking for a controller, uh, I can say I highly, highly recommend 8-Bit Doe's NES 30 Pro Classic Thing. What is the official name? It's the 8-Bit Doe NES 30 Pro. Uh, so grab that on Amazon. 40 bucks for the controller, 10 bucks for the phone holder plastic thing. Uh, it, they both feel really well built. I've used this for uh, about a month or so. Uh, and I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, just a few minor complaints, like with the weight and the analog sticks. But for 40 bucks and a classic controller with a really, really solid D-pad, I can't really complain. So if you would like to pick one of these up, we have actually got a referral link, because we like money, uh, in the bottom of this video. Now, it's not going to cost you any money. It just takes money away from Amazon and gives it to me, which is great for everyone. Mostly me. Uh, but... As always, you can subscribe to the podcast, subscribe to us on YouTube. We've got all of our stuff right over here on the side, so check us out there. If you want us to talk about any topics, review any specific games, please let us know in the comments, through email, Twitter, whatever. Uh, I'm Tom from 72 Pin Connector, and game on.